this lesson is on solving linear inequalities. So when we solve a linear inequality, we're going to do it the exact same way that we did when we solved an equation. So the important things to remember here are you're still going to think about building that wall, and you're still going to do the same thing to each side of that wall, and our goal is to get that x value all by itself. So here I have x plus 19. I have to do the opposite of that and subtract the 19 from each side. Now, I'm not going to change anything about the way that I solve it. I still have an x on this side, 24 minus 19 is 5, and instead of an equal sign, I'm just going to keep that same greater than sign. Now, in this case, we want to solve it, and then they want us to graph and write our answer in inequality and interval notation. So it's a great review of kind of all of the things that we know. So first of all, it's greater than 5. So I know that it's starting at 5, but not including 5, all the way up to infinity. So that's going to be an open here and then on forever in this direction. Hopefully next time our you know, number line's a little bit bigger. But basically it's all the numbers greater than 5, but remember that this says it doesn't include 5. Now if I'm writing my answer in inequality notation, that's this one. This is inequality notation saying x is greater than 5. They didn't ask but if they asked for set builder, it would be all of the x's such that x is greater than 5. So sometimes they will ask for that set builder notation that we've talked about previously. The interval notation will go from 5 on to forever. And so it's an open on 5 and then on to infinity. And again, it's always the open bracket when we're dealing with infinity. This one's a little bit more difficult, but again, we're solving these the same way we did um, that when we had um, an equals there instead. So here on this side, I'm going to distribute that 2. So that gives me 2y minus, oops. Ah, let me try that again. Our next question, we are solving this inequality that's a little bit more difficult. Again, I'm going to start here by distributing that 2. So 2 times y is 2y, and 2 times 3 is 6. Nothing is going to change. And from here, I really have two choices. So I'm going to actually solve this in two different ways. So my first way, I'm just going to recopy this. My first way is to always get that y or that x or whatever the variable is to the left side of my equation. So that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to subtract the 4y from each side. And when I do that, I get negative 2y minus 6 is less than negative 10. And make sure you keep that negative with the 10. So if you need to go ahead and ching ching all of those to make it so that it's uh, the negatives are with those numbers, that's not a bad idea. Now I'm going to add 6 to each side. And that gives me negative 2y is less than negative 4. Now, I'm going to stop here for just a minute. I'm going to pop over to the other side, and then I'm going to talk about what's going to be kind of crazy that's going to happen over here. So let's go over here. I'm recopying 2y minus 6 is less than 4y minus 10. So my other option, over here I subtracted that 4y because I wanted everything on the left side. This time I'm going to subtract 2y because I want to deal with positive y value. So 2y minus 2y goes away. I get negative 6 is less than 2y minus 10. And then I would add 10 to each side because I'm trying to get the y by itself. And that gives me 2y on this side, negative 6 plus 10 on this side. So I have 4 is less than 2y. Now obviously over here, I would divide by 2, divide by 2. I would have y on this side. I would have 2 on this side. And so now I've got an answer, but my y is on the wrong side. So if I wanted to rewrite this, I could put the y here and the 2 here, as long as I keep this part pointing in the same, towards the same unit. So here it's pointing at the 2, it's open to the y, so I can rewrite it as open to the y, pointing at the 2, same way it was before. So I've basically taken the whole thing and flipped it backwards. Now watch what happens over here. When I divide... So this is the correct answer. y is greater than 2 is correct. Over here, when I divide by a negative 2, I get y here. I get 2 here. But notice, this is pointing the wrong direction. So that's not the correct answer, because we already know our correct answer is y is actually greater than 2. So 
whenever, and this is whenever you multiply or divide by a negative value, your inequality is going to switch direction. So here I've divided by a negative 2, which means, yes, this is a y, yes, this is a 2, but this less than becomes a greater than. Okay, So that's kind of the rule that that keeps this correct answer the same, even if I end up dividing by negative. So if I divide by a negative, just remember, everything gets flipped around. Now, to graph it, it would be an open circle on 2, so open bracket on 2, all of the numbers greater than that. This is the answer in inequality notation. In interval notation, it's from 2 all the way up to infinity. Now, this one, is where we're going to use that trick that we talked about with how to clear fractions. So here if I want to clear fractions, remember that I'm looking at the denominators of 3 and 6 and saying what is the smallest number that 3 and 6 both go into? And it's 6. So what I'm going to do, just to make this easier on myself, is I'm going to take everything times 6. So if I take this times 6, let's write it like this. So if I take this one times 6, I'm going to reduce here to get 6 divided by 3 is 2, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I'm reducing. So that actually gives me 2, and then x minus 4. 1 times 6 obviously is 6, and these 6's cancel out, so I get x. So here's my new equation. Now I'm going to solve. So I'm going to start by distributing, because I don't like to have parentheses in my question. So I've got 2x minus 8, and then I recopy plus 6. I recopy as less than or equal to x. Again, I might, in this case, subtract the 2x over to the other side. That gives me negative 8 plus 6. Those are like terms. I can smush them together. That gives me negative 2. That's 1 minus 2 over here gives me negative 1x. Now this one's going to get a little bit crazy, because now I have to divide by negative 1. And we just found out that if I divide by a negative, my inequality flips around. So I get 2 is greater than or equal to x, but I don't really want that 2 to come first. I'm looking for the x to come first. So now I'm going to put the x on this side. Notice it's pointing at the x. The 2 on this side, it still has to be pointing at the x. So a lot of people get confused here because I flipped it because I divided by a negative. But over here, I didn't flip it. I just rewrote the whole thing to make it so the x came first. Now, why would I bother doing that? Well, because it's very easy when I'm solving a linear inequality, if the x comes first, I know that it is going to point in the direction that I should be shading. So notice, now that I've rewritten it this way, it's pointing to the left, and that's the way that I shade it over here. So that's what I want. Now, this is still a correct answer. But notice it's pointing in the opposite direction. So it's a really good idea to make sure that you rewrite it so that x is on the left side or whatever your variable is, is on the left side, and then you can you know, shade in the correct direction. Now on this one, the interval notation would be down here, remember, is negative infinity. So it goes from negative infinity all the way up to 2, and it includes 2. Here are a few for you to try. There's actually four of them for you to try, so I would press pause, try all four of those questions, and then come back and see how you did. All right, so for this first one, um, we've got kind of a lot going on here. So on the first one, I would combine like terms on the left side. So I've got 3 and negative 1. That gives me 2x. I'm going to recopy my plus 19, recopy my 4 minus x. Now, I want to get all of the x's to one side and all of the numbers to the other. So I'm going to add 1x to each side so that I can get all of my x's to one side. So this side, those cancel. 2x plus 1x is 3x. You can do it on two separate steps or on the same step. I'm going to go ahead and recopy the plus 19. Um, but you could have subtracted the 19 on that step as well. This time, I'm going to subtract the 19 because, remember, I'm trying to get that 3x by itself. So that gives me 3x is greater than, and this is 4 minus 19. If you need to make it plus negative, that's fine. These are opposite signs. I find the difference, which is 15. Bigger number's negative. And now I'm going to divide by 3. And that gives me x is greater than negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. Now, 
notice on this one, I did not have to flip that inequality around because even though my answer is negative, by the number that I divided by here was a positive number, and so I didn't have to flip it. Now, um, we want to graph and then write our inequality. This is inequality notation. Interval notation would be from negative 5 on to infinity, and my graph would be at negative 5, and it would be open, shaded to the right. So it's, again, this one is pointing in the direction that it should be shaded. My second one, again, I'd use that little fraction technique that we talked about. 2 and 3 both um, go into 6. That's the smallest number, so I'm going to take this times 6, this times 6, and this times 6. So this one reduces to 1 and 3. That gives me 3x plus 6 is less than. This reduces to 1 and 2. 2x times 2 is 4x. Now a lot of people want to subtract that 4x to the left side. I wouldn't suggest doing that because notice that this side only has x's on it. So I'm going to go ahead and move that 3x to the opposite side. And that gives me 6 is less than 1x. Do I have to divide by 1? No, because 1x and x are the exact same thing. However, if I'm going to graph it, it's not a bad idea to put the x on the left side instead and the 6 on the right side. Now notice it's pointing at the 6, so I still need it to point at the 6. So my answer is x is less or is greater than or equal to 6. As an interval notation, that would be, oops, I have a closed bracket. I keep doing that. A closed bracket on to infinity. And then to graph, I'm at 6, closed bracket, shading on to infinity. My next set of questions, same idea. I'm going to follow that, um, basically the order of steps to solve an inequality. On the left side, I can't do anything because on the right, I still have to get this out of the parentheses before I can solve. So this is two times x and four times two. And now I'm gonna combine like terms. So these two are on the same side. So I'm just gonna recopy three x minus seven here. 2x, this turns into minus 8 and minus 1, which is minus 9. I'm going to get all of the x's to one side. That's always my first priority. Don't worry about the constants until you get those x's out of the way. So this is x minus 7. If you have a 1x minus 7, that's fine too. Is greater than negative 9. Keep that negative with the 9. Add 7 to each side, and I get x is greater than negative 2. So if it's greater than, that means negative 2 onto infinity. And it would be negative 2 shaded to the right. And my last one, hopefully we end up with a less than, but I don't. looks like everything is greater than. I must have been in a really good mood when I made this. Everything is great. This one, I'm going to try to get um, the x by itself. So I'm going to add 5 to each side. That gives me negative 2x is less than 7. Now I'm going to divide by a negative 2, and we've talked about what happens when I divide by a negative or multiply by a negative. This is going to flip around, so it's going to turn into greater than. And then 7 divided by negative 2, I'm just going to leave that negative um, 7 halves. You could write that as x is greater than negative 3.5 or 3.5. Also, um, when I graph that, you can just put... Um, most of the time you're going to see, like, say, a negative 4 and a negative 3. We know that negative 3.5 is halfway between those two. So I would do an open circle here shaded to the right. So it's going to look something like 